Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is brought to you by the Friends in Recovery Community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction. Join our hosts as they speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Welcome, everybody, to the Friends in Recovery podcast with Jersey Ed. I'm your host, Jersey Ed, guys. Um, along with my two co-hosts, Buckeye Bambi and Becoming Beth today. Is that what it is, Beth? All right. That's what, what I'm doing. What are you becoming? You want to explain that or time's up I too think- late? All right. <laughs> what is becoming about you, Beth? <laughs> I'm becoming Beth. You're becoming Beth. Okay. All right. Or you're becoming Beth. Oh, right? see, that's how I look at it. <laughs> wow. Ed's being nice to me. It is bizarre. That's right. It is bizarre day today. <laughs> All right. Back to the show. What the fuck is wrong with you, Beth? Why are you bizarre? But why are you? There you go. Beth? They like that. There you go. Back to <laughs> well, hello, ladies. How, how are you ladies doing today? Good. Good, good. It's settled hey, down here in this end of the world, finally. It did, finally, with for you. Good, good, good. Hey, speaking of Bizarro, guys, that last week's show was crazy, wasn't it? Like, how what? crazy was that show last week? It was epic. It was. It was. That was probably the best show ever. That guy's awesome. We need that him guy, back. That I got guy was points awesome. for recruiting him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we, we're going to give you a raise. We're talking about that uh, in yeah. the work. Double her today. salary. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he doubles it all the time. That's right. I double it all the time. All the time we do it. So anyways, Beth, how did you do it in your fifth step? I'm sure everybody wants to know. I didn't do it. I didn't finish what? writing. So we Come did on. the other two ladies and then we're going to, well, we did one. We started another. So we'll do it in two weeks. So I have two more, two more weeks to write. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Two more so, weeks. Uh, I'm a slacker. We, we all still want it. you to go in there barebacking it with nothing. <laughs> I I want I want comments. I want everybody to tell tell Beth, do not write your fifth step, your fourth step, and go in there with your fifth, whatever it is. Don't do it. Just go in there with nothing. Just go in there with nothing. Nothing. Just oh, wing it. Ditto. To, wing it. You know, the, all the weeks she's listened to. Ditto. That's ditto. It. Ditto. That's it. All right, guys, enough yeah. of babbling here. You know, it's, it right. is Balanced Recovery Month here on Friends and Recovery Podcast. We'll talk about that, about that in a minute. Obviously, we're not balanced, so we'll figure out all that. Um, and to help us figure that out, this week's uh, guest is John Fertemeyer from Torchlight Interventions. And we'll find out more about John and what his, his company does, obviously, interventions. But uh, John just chime in anytime you want if you if you had a fourth and fifth step let us know if you uh whatever it is you just you just chime in along with us john so stay tuned for some good week some amazing recovery here um some uh let's get some uh uh, stuff out of the way here podcast hotline is 800-736 i did it fucking again guys i did it again (laughs) we're not giving you free patience over here I know it's 800-989-6504 help at friends and recovery podcast is our email address and website friends and recovery community.org. And below us is all our emails. Uh, Carl will put them up for us and there you are. And you can email us directly. Look for us on all social media, friends and recovery communities. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that what button? That share button? No, that comment. Subscribe button. Smash Smash the shit out of it and give us, get us notified, right? Get us notified. What is, I don't know. I don't know this shit. Like notify us. No, notify you that we're on that. Notify whatever. Just listen to Yeah. Yeah. Just Just do the thing. Yeah, just listen to another show and we'll figure it out. So uh, purple, the Purple Heart Club here is Bambi. Uh, Purple Hearts for Bambi. Beth gets Black Hearts. Jersey Ed gets Blue. And of course, our guest today, John Fertemeyer, will be getting Red Hearts. So give a lot of Red Hearts today. Um, no Purple Hearts and some a lot of Blue Hearts. Beth, no Black Hearts. 
Anyways, John, you ask, what are those hearts for? Well, I'll tell you right now what they're for. <laughs> you didn't see his lips move, did you? He's a he's a tranquilitist or whatever they call him. So um, mm. basically what we do here is we want people to give us hearts to just support our favorite person here on Friends and Recovery Podcast. So you will be getting red hearts um, in the comments below. Cool. So I'd like to thank all of our donors for make this show possible. And don't forget, Friends and Recovery Podcast is part of the FIRE Network. Uh, for more information, please go to friendsandrecoverycommunity.org to our website, and you'll find out all about that. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is sober shout-out time, my favorite part of the show. And uh, this is where we go around giving a great shout-out to anybody who um, who Need deserves what? it. Yeah, who deserves it, right? Anybody, just anybody. Everybody so deserves it. Everybody gets a sober shout out. You get a sober shout out and you get a sober shout out and you get a sober shout out. So We should take the word <laughs> deserves out of the English language. Dessert? No, no dessert. Deserves. Leave dessert. Oh, deserves. Deserve. Yeah. What show are you on? We're on Friends and Recovery. Deserve. What the hell are you talking about? You should take that word out of the English language. Deserve. Right. I will I will call Mr. Webster up today and I will have that done for you, Beth. Thank you. Thank you very much. John, John yeah. what, uh, do you have a sober shout out for us today, John? Um, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll shout out to my my friend, Ted. I call him Ted Seabreeze just because uh, that's the group I know him from. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's actually actually started off with me as as a, just kind of like a friend and a mentor a little bit. And, and he's He's now my sponsor and, and wow, you know, I, I, I think he's a good guy. I know he's a good guy. I also know he's, he's done his own work and he also, I know him from a, a sister fellowship, ACA. Okay. You know, in attendance there as well. Um, so yeah, Ted, Ted from Seabreeze. Ted, Seabreeze, Ted, Ted from Seabreeze. All right. Sponsor. Yeah. That's a way I'd say, listen, that's good. I never thought to give my sponsor a shout out. Maybe I'll get some brownie points and he'll cut cut some slack. Well, no. I got to do it too because <laughs> like we're supposed to meet every Tuesday at six p.m. Uh huh. Anything happening today? And he texted uh, me. We meet at five thirty, and I said before I got a <laughs> podcast, so I was going to ask you to meet later. I don't know how happy he's going to be about me putting the podcast in front of my sobriety. So I figure I better like try and brownie up. So there you go. There you go. That's it. Good, good addict and alcoholic manipulating the system. Good job, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Well, thank you for that shout out. And, and Ted, um, congratulations on being his sponsor. Good luck too. <laughs> his name's actually Ted Burns. Ted Burns. Uh oh, he's we on might Facebook. Have all right, Ted. Get, look for Ted Burns on Facebook, guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Uh, Bambi, any silver shout outs? You know, I have um, um, a silver shout out to Queen Maria, who has two years. Oh, Queen, Queen Maria, Maria, yes. Queen uh, Maria. I want yeah. this person to be my friend. Queen she, Maria uh, is cool. She's a she truck is. driver or something, isn't she? Yeah, her and her husband. Definitely want this person to be my friend. Yeah, they she's wild. Driving. She found us through AA Inner Group, but we just became fast friends. And she's a great lady. And um, she's got two years clean and sober. And she just got a new little puppy she showed us today on the meeting. It was so cute. Can't remember what, what she get. It's a little thing. Shih Tzu, maybe? That's tiny. Yeah. Little, Is this a little. fucking recovery show or a dog show? Like every week it's about dogs. Like I have four dogs. It's enough. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Friends Recovery Dog Show today. We're going to be talking about all our fucking dogs and cats. <laughs> I'm kidding. Today, I'm kidding. Man. Watch out. I'm kidding. Anything else you want to say about the dogs? Okay, Beth, just take it over. Have fun. John, you can leave. I'll leave and we'll leave these two to talk about dogs and cats. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, hey, Queen Maria, we love you. Uh, congratulations. Beth. You know, I fool around, but I love you dearly. And how, what about a sober shout out? I know it's me. I know you want to. It's a hard eye roll. It's hard. <laughs> I want to give a super shout out to Ed's dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Ed's dogs. I'll second that. <laughs> there I you actually go. Have that's, one. My, that's my shout out for the show. Ed's dogs. I had one Ed's under dogs. my foot playing with her ball in my shoe. Like. Like in my shoe. 
You're lucky. Like sticking the, the ball in my shoe. So, so Ed, Ed, stop talking about your dogs. <laughs> yeah, is this a recovery show or a dog show? Or a dog there show. You go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Recovery and dogs go hand in hand, don't they? That's right. Yeah. That's it. You know That's what I had? Really want to know it. I had a get. You know, how people have get sober jobs. Yeah, I had a get sober dog. Nice. <laughs> I got sober for my a get sober dog. There you go. That's yeah. right. Yeah, my yeah, dog absolutely. counted on me. I had to feed it. I had to make sure yeah. she was a dog. Love I it. Had to do all that, and that yeah. was the first time I cared about anybody in an awfully long yeah. time. <laughs> All right. I love that. I love that. And let's hear your stories, guys. If you have a get sober dog, let us know. And that's probably a lot more than what we could probably think about there because, you know, dogs and animals are a huge part of our lives. And when we go neglect ourselves, we're going to neglect our families, our dogs, anything that comes in a way. So, yes, I, I, I think that's great. So, um, and let's see what else. Uh, I got a sober shout out and everybody knows it's the standing. Speaking of dogs, Carl. <laughs> uh, Chelsea, you're not a dog, but uh, Carl and Chelsea from Sober Pod. Thank you guys for a wonderful promotion last week, right? Last week, if you listen to Sober Pod, they did a great, great job of promoting us. I don't know. I think, yeah, Carl was like, oh, yeah, Friends in Recovery is always talking about us. Blah, 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 blah. Go listen to him. And yeah, I mean, he really like pumped us up. So but we awesome. pump him up every Thanks, week. Carl. Yeah, every Carl week. Has we dogs. Pump him up. Carl has dogs Carl, too. Dogs. Yeah. Carl I mean, has inspired me to also write a daily meditation book. There you go. 366 fucking days sober. Go buy it, everybody. We want to see the sales go up, right? I wanna, go I'm up. gonna um, I'm gonna one up Carl. I'm gonna do 377 days sober. <laughs> 67. John, John, do you have one of these books yet, John? Do not. All right. Well, we'll have all to get cool you one. All the cool kids have them. That's right. That's right. All the cool it's kids. How have I became them. a cool kid. One. I got one. <laughs> I'm not cool at all. Hang around with <laughs> us, John. You'll go places. So, <laughs> not I'll sure. Myself, I'm four good viewers. places. <laughs> oh God. So yeah, go over, listen to Sober Pod, guys, and uh, buy 366 fucking days sober. Um, and we'll be reading from that in a minute. Um, don't forget we have twice daily AA meetings on Zoom, so you can find us on AA's website or friends and recovery community.org. Click on the button there, go directly to our meeting. And here it is, the time we've been waiting for, guys. Question, Question of the week. Question of the week. Okay, guys. Suck the question this. of the week is I know everybody, we all suck at it. So question of the week is currently where because oh, on, I should explain this because it is balanced recovery month. The question of the week is currently, where is the imbalance in your life? Where's the imbalance currently in your life today? Um, because we're not perfect. We're not, you know, we're not made, you know, kind of what we do things just right. There is to me, I know there's always an imbalance in my life. And today at this very moment, I think in my personal life, Versus my work life has been over. My work life has been overloading my personal life all day today. Obviously, because it's it's work. It's a it's a you know day after a holiday when when we're recording this, um, and I just neglected shaving. I, I I didn't shave today. I didn't pack. I'm going on a trip tomorrow for a week. I uh, I did nothing personally, but that's okay because I will I will figure it out. I'll stay up to till. 9 30 tonight. Oh wow. <laughs> That's late, man. I'm like a, I'm tired yeah, about it. 9 30 is late, guys. So uh, if you want to email me at 9 22, I will answer it, but 9 31, I will not. Uh so ladies and gentlemen, John, since you're a guest, where is your imbalance today? Um, I would say my imbalance is um just between work, my recovery, and family. So I uh I have about two years ago, I got involved. I started a business one, and then I also got into a relationship where mm -hmm. um, my significant other, she's got two children. So it was, you know, that was a change. That was a huge change in itself. Um, wonderful change. Absolutely. Best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Guaranteed. Um, you know, it's so standing right there. Yeah, that, <laughs> that changed everything, right? I mean, that changed the amount of time. What did you say, Beth? It's said, is she standing right there? <laughs> she's probably, you know, maybe she's watch. on. Maybe she's, she's watching. On, your head. She's but, probably um, watching. No, it, it really is. The he best doesn't want to get his ass beat when he gets home. 
<laughs> but the deal is, is like, you know, that just changed the number of meetings that I went to every week that mm-hmm. changed, you know, oh, yeah. the amount of time that I have to sponsor guys sometimes, um, you know, but now what's really today, what's really created a little bit of an imbalance is that, you know, now we have that we were just 50% of the time with the children at home. Now we have them 100% mm-hmm. of the time. They're there with us all the time. That's so a that's big, a huge imbalance. Mm-hmm. That's that's a balance shift. I don't mm-hmm. know if I call it an imbalance. I just call it a balance shift of where yeah. I'm now understanding how to be there for all of them at all times. Right. Yeah. You know, whereas before I could kind of, you know, th- those kids depend on me. They need me. You know, they're mm-hmm. eight and 10 years old and they, yeah. they expect me to be age. around whether they yeah. say it or not, you know, yeah. so that would be where, where I'm at, but I I'm, you know, that's why I have a sponsor. That's why I have prayer. That's why I've got meditation. You know, that's why I got time to get quiet. And yeah. when I, I need to do that and recognize, you know, that God dang, things could be a lot worse. Oh yeah. Amen on that <laughs> you know one. I mean? Absolutely. I could, I could have a lot bigger problems. That's for yeah. sure. You know, absolutely. We'll call these champagne problems, right? There you go. I love it. Yeah. Leaves yeah. in the pool, baby. Leaves yeah. in the pool. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's, that's exactly yeah. what it is. And uh, thanks, John. And let's go over to, uh, I don't know, uh, Imbalance Beth. Is that what it is today? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> becoming... <laughs> Maybe she's becoming balanced. <laughs> she's becoming... There you go. Becoming balanced, Beth. Um, you know, it's interesting. Um, I think maybe my finances are probably one of the least balanced Ooh. things in okay. my life right now. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a that's an honest answer. Love it. Two great honest answers, right? Right there. So that's a tough one to to kind of swallow. Yeah, yeah, man. It's like the older I get, the more stuff mm-hmm. and the more payments and the more, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And the same pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But it's like <laughs> balancing and like, so we have enough to cover the bills, but like we want to put a retaining wall in or we want to put an addition mm-hmm. on the house or you know, my, my car needs to be serviced. Like it's like, it's frustrating. I don't like it. This so. too shall pass right with everything, whatever it is, it will pass. So we will pray for you for more, more, more money, financial balance. in your life. <laughs> no, How about pay for more money? And then I just money. throw money in it. You would just spend it if we, if we, if you got it. So you have to learn how to work with it first and then you get it. Okay. Okay. I'll work on it. I can be your financial guru. So just give me a call. Excellent. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. How about you, Bambi? What's your um your imbalance? What today? hasn't been my imbalance? <laughs> yeah, year? it's true. It's been a hell of a year, you know. It is. 2024 is going to be a little better. But I would say what's taken the, the biggest imbalance right now is my mm-hmm. sleep-wake cycle. Mm-hmm. I, I'm really imbalanced. I, and it's probably just from the stress of everything this year, but I cannot figure out how to sleep. I wake up mm-hmm. every single day at 5 a.m. Always. That, that hasn't changed. But I can't figure out if I want to stay up till midnight, if I want to fall asleep at 8 o'clock at night. And then every hour on the hour, I look at the I mm-hmm. look at time. every and, in, and, and every and it, this has been going on the whole year. I mean, the whole year. And I you haven't know, been long. Put your feet in hot, hot water before you go to bed. And you piss the bed. No. <laughs> no. no, my sponsor actually oh. like got suggested to do this. She was having the same issues and she slept straight through the night. Really? I'll try. I'll try anything to tell you the right? truth. Try anything. Yeah. There, Lavender. Like I'm sleeping Lavender. two times through the night, right? I'm like sound asleep, really sound asleep. And I have an elderly dog. And that's when she has to get up and go out. And uh, she can't wait. So it's like the first wine, you've got to get her up, get her out. Yeah. Get her out. Before she, before she like pisses the bed. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. Listen, growing old isn't fun. And uh, if you can figure out how to grow old gracefully, let us know here at Friends in Recovery. You can call us. You know what number to call. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So good. some good uh, imbalances that are fairly champagne problems, I guess. I, I mean, because we're growing old, we're we're healthy, we're... We have finances. We have things. So we have financial issues because we have things. We have a job and we have kids because, you know, because you made a commitment to take on somebody and their kids. And that's a huge commitment. And we get to do that today. Right, guys? Because we're sober. You get to. Yeah, we get to. Yeah. You know know what Bambi gets to do right now? Bambi gets to read 366 fucking days sober, guys. That's what she gets to do right now. 
There it is. And then we'll talk to John, what he does with his ice cream truck. No, he's not an ice cream man. <laughs> He's the fifth. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of the fifth, yes. Don't forget to play. Discover the things that used to excite you. Find the things that sparked your curiosity that made you get up in the morning. There are three words that recently I kept scribbling in my big book and big red book: childish versus childlike. For far too long, I lived child childish when I really desired to be childlike. I wanted to feel excited about life, but I was often bitter, resentful, spiteful, and full of piss and vinegar. Even though I desired to live differently, I couldn't under the in, I couldn't under the influence. So now that you're sober, try to tap into your childhood feelings. Look for the things that you like as a young child. For me, it was drawing, writing, and art. I loved creating things from found objects and using my imagination. Loved listening to music as I created. These are two of my favorite things to do at the same time. All those things sparked wonder, curiosity, and excitement. They activated parts of my brain that made the world seem magical. The reflection, am I living childish or childlike? And the daily challenge, find something childlike to do today. Good reading. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, John. Um, we're going to bring you on here and uh, John Fertemeyer from uh, uh, Torchlight In Interventions. And uh, he's a very good friend of mine. Um, I just want to give you a, a formal kind of greeting and welcome. So John, welcome to the show. I know we've, uh, you've been talking to us, but welcome to the show. And uh, John, we're going to talk about that reading. We're going to talk about what you do. You want to tell us who you are and just kind of give us a, a kind of a, a lead in for, for who you are and what you do. Sure. Okay. So uh, my name, like Ed said, my name is John Furtmeyer, not Furtmeyer. He loves to call me Furtmeyer. Uh, just like well, I call him Conchonio. So yeah, that's right. yeah. we're, we're even there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Captain Conchonio, no that's less. Right, um, that's right. <laughs> anyhow, I, uh, my, my name is John Furtmeyer. I, I own a company, a uh, co-own it called Torchlight Interventions and Consulting. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a certified intervention professional, certified case manager interventionist. I have um, done, I, I believe a lot in, in education, but so our company, we obviously we do educational um, work with families and helping them in the beginning process of uh, getting an intervention done, but also the actual facilitation of the intervention. Um, you know, I believe that intervention is, is not an event, it's a process. So it very much starts with that education of the family and uh, getting that that family team, uh, support team, call it what you wish. You know, I like I know that a lot of times it's not just family, but it's it's, you know, those people that are coming together, our family and and just getting everybody prepared to uh, to have a conversation and, and meetings with with uh, their loved one, their person of concern to to show them how much they care, um, you know, that there is an opportunity on the table that you know i my go to all the time is, is like these people will never stop loving you no matter what you know that's a given mm -hmm. um they'll always be there but what we really want to do is get everybody on a path of wellness and healthy you know being healthy so provided you know we can all get to that place they're going to go 200% in your favor and walk the path with you and do whatever it takes to get you to this place, not back on track, but let's get your life on track. Where do you want to go? And so I think that that's one of the key parts of, of what we do. My partner and I is to, you know, create that empowerment, create that autonomy for our, our clients and get them, of course, to go and accept to, to go to treatment um, and whatever that looks like. But more importantly, to create family unity and, and cohesiveness so that everybody understands what the other is doing and each one is supporting each other, really, you know, trying more than anything to put the family back together. And mm -hmm. uh, we do that also. We we found that it was pretty irresponsible feeling to do an intervention and then be like, goodbye. So we include on the backside of someone coming out of residential treatment, we can give them a month of aftercare. Um, we will work with the with the uh, discharge planner to determine what the discharge plan looks like. 
where they're returning to, find the resources that are needed and then match them up with that discharge plan. And so when the person walks out of the door, they have us. They have a case manager who is my partner, Liz Hawkins. Um, She's a social worker. She's amazing at what she does. And so she steps in, works with the family and works with that loved one to make sure that that discharge plan gets enacted and carried out and that that person has support. Yeah. Um, John, a, so, a couple things here that I know we're all in the in the business. Bambi's been around long enough to understand this, but a couple of things. What what is an intervention? Real quickly, just explain it in 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 your you know like in a, a quick layman's term, so everybody knows. Okay. So so an intervention <clears throat> would be that a, a a process of stepping in with a family group and a support group to approach a loved one who's got an issue with substance use disorder, alcohol use disorder, or mental health, and present them with an opportunity to make a directional change with their life. Okay. And this is done with the family or with the addict themselves? Who is it? Who is it done with? With with the whole group. So with the family and, and we don't do the Unless it's it's a very we don't do the Johnson model the the uh, like surprise attack type thing, um, it is brought from a whole family team to a person and and creating like an opportunity, but more of anything a family meeting and a family opportunity for everyone to take place and to have a part of it. But you know the intervention the word intervention comes from like intervening in between whatever substance is happening to that person or what they're using or what's causing them problems, intervening between that and allowing them to have the opportunity for a directional change in their mm-hmm. life. And directional change. I love that. Just to, you know, get us on a different plane and get us thinking differently. Right. Um, the other thing, case management, what does that mean? You know, I, I you know, as, as, you know, as kind of the layman's terms, what, what is case management to some people and how important is, is it to an invention and afterwards? So case management would be as, <clears throat> as a, a term in the way that we use it is aftercare. So case management would mean arranging for the proper resources to be in place, arranging for family members to get their own education about what recovery looks like and, and to have their own resources to start to understand how to stay in their lane, how to support their loved one. Case management looks like for a person who's coming out of a residential treatment, entering onto a journey in recovery, or whether they're coming out of an intensive outpatient program, whatever type of treatment they've been in, to get them, uh, have someone to interact with them to make sure that they have a plan in place that's working and to continue to manage all of those moving parts so that those parts stay together and that person Mm -hmm stays on a path and, and just monitor it for lack of a better term, monitor it yeah. that it's, it's working. Yeah. So basically you're going to guide this, this person that comes out of treatment and her family through the rough patches, the good patches, whatever it is, you're going to guide them through whatever questions they may have um, with a call or a follow-up or something along those lines. Correct. We, we schedule, we have <laughs> scheduled calls with the family every week and we have scheduled okay. calls with the with the person, you know, we'll call them the identified patient, the person of concern. So, and and this is after the intervention's done. You guys add this on. That's great. Correct. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Bambi, since Beth left us, do you have any questions <laughs> for 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 John? <laughs> if you um, how, what is your success rate? What do you feel like? How many people Ooh. actually end up going into treatment? How many are positive outcomes versus how many just tell you, you know, not interested? So I would say 80%, 75 to 80 go within like a first time, first touch. Like they already know the problems there. Another 20%, you know, be a 20, let's say if it's 75, then the 20% are going to be hangers on a little bit of like, okay, I don't have a problem. I'll do this. I'll go to therapy. I'll go, you know, they start throwing up Hail Marys. But we part of our process in the pre-intervention is that, you know, during this process of of meeting as a family, we create bottom line boundaries. Mm. If you don't go, then and I have to say it to them, okay, granted, you're an adult, but if you don't engage into this opportunity, then the behaviors of the ones that are around you are going to shift because they can no longer participate in unhealthy behavior with Mm. you. Right. So they're going to be changed. And that drives people most times to recognize, 
okay, things have shifted. So that may take a month. It may two, take two months. It could take five days. It just depends. But so that other 20% would go, the other 5% just absolutely want nothing to do with it. And uh, kind of, uh, we keep checking in on them. We keep working with their families. The key thing though, is if I had to put like a success rate all together, it's 100% because all families that we work with have a new pathway, all of them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no, no question about that. And isn't it the hardest thing to get the families to keep those bottom line um, boundaries set? I would think that would be, you know, there's such a codependent relationship and things. I mean, I would think that would be almost as difficult to get the family members to comply with those as it is to get the addict or alcoholic into the treatment. I would say you are 100% right. If not more difficult sometimes with family, honestly, you know, because they they're going to lose their role. They're losing their protector role, their codependent role. And so, you know, to, to give them nothing else in return would be failure. But if you mm. can give them support groups, if you can give them Al-Anon, if you can give them simple, you know, check in. I've got a guy right now. I'm checking in with him on Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays, I'm feeding him some some literature to, to study, to read. And we're circling back on Friday. How are you doing? You know, and just, just conditioning them in that way. Now, mm -hmm. I wish that, you know, Liz was on with us too, because she's our director of case management and she's the one, I don't know. She's the, she's the family whisperer. I don't know what she does exactly, but uh, she's real good at what she does. So I let her do it, you know, but yeah, Liz uh, is like the wizard of Oz. She's in this, in this closet behind closed doors you know, with lights going off. John, John walks past like, what's going on behind the that? screen? <laughs> yeah. What's good. By going the way, it says here, we are watching it. Ah, uh, yeah. She's on here. She said, hi, John and Ed. So yeah, there she is. She's laughing. So um, John, you mentioned something about, um, I love this word empowerment, empowerment, like you empower the client, you empower the families. Talk a little bit about um, why would you empower them? Like if, if they're using drugs and alcohol, why would you give somebody power to, to whatever is it's, and, and that is an important word in, in our field. So, right. So I would say starting with uh, the person who's in uh you know, has been suffering and struggling, you know, to give them the idea that they're not dysfunctional. They're not, you know, uh, they're, they're not a person who's defective. They've just hit a, an area in their life that they don't, they no longer have control over. So if someone has no control and you allow them to see that, you know, if with taking some certain actions and some certain steps, they can start to have some sort of control on the direction their life is going. Um, and, and provided they do certain things, that they will have the opportunity to drive their own bus, to have that autonomy and to feel re-empowered. Let's even call it that for them, re-empowered, because mm. at one point, I'm sure they were great people and they're still at that core, those great people, right? They've just been covered up by a bit of, of difficulty. And so with them, you know, being empowered is, is going to be the key to to actually starting this new life and this new pathway yeah. with the family of course i mean they need to be empowered because they think that all of their efforts have failed completely mm. right everything they've done has failed we tried this it didn't work we tried this it didn't work we have tried you know so when you help them recognize that no matter what they did it would not have worked but we're going to give you some tools that will work if you'll use them and that is empowering too. That is giving them the opportunity to take their life back and to take their own pathway in, in their own recovery as seriously as the person who is actually going through the process of getting ready, rid of the substance in their life. Mm. So it's they have that same opportunity to feel like, okay, you know what? I was also just dealing with something that was beyond my control and now I can get back in control of yeah. what's going on, provided I do certain things that will line up with these type of behaviors. Mm -hmm. John, what happens when um, the addict doesn't 
want to go to treatment or, 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 or take the suggestions or even go through treatment and doesn't comply and the boundaries have to be kind of set up and consequences have to hit. Do the families hold that? Or do, do, do you find that the families um, will keep working their recovery versus the, the addict or alcoholic, the client themselves um, when they're out there using the, do you, do you still work with families when they're, when they're the addicts not in recovery? Absolutely. And that is part of our process. That is part of no matter whether that's why I said it's a hundred percent success. If you want to look at the families, mm. because we're continuing to work with the families. We had a case fresh in my mind was that they, you know, um, basically the son didn't want anything to do with recovery. He wasn't going to do it. He wasn't going to have anything to do with it. We kept working. Liz kept working with the family, weekly zoom meetings, weekly zoom meetings, Maybe a little bit more than that could have gotten a little bit more out of control to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. but they were there and, mm -hmm. and she was there for them. And the next thing, you know, the, the person is realizing I can't run this game anymore. Like mm -hmm. my game doesn't work. And mm -hmm. so if we can have those families hold those boundaries, eventually the idea is the loved one doesn't have the opportunities to manipulate they did before. And they come into the fold, right? Mm -hmm. Once they're in the fold, they're part of the team. No longer is the focus on them. The focus is on the, the substance and the addiction. Mm. So you take the focus off. They no longer feel focused on. And uh, yeah, so it's it's really important that you that we get those families to hold their boundaries. And that comes from lots of phone calls, lots of being there for them, lots of, you know, I do not envy people who do case management in any capacity at all, because they really, that what they do is, is phenomenal work. It really mm. is. I mean, I'm great, at, I'm great at putting things together. I'm great at getting families together. I'm great at getting things going great at the process. But when it comes to that kind of work, um, I leave it best to the people who are trained to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Beth, do you have any clinical, qu I know you're a little bit more clinical. Do you have anything uh, you want to add to that? Or any questions for John about the, uh, about the interventions? No, I just, I really process. love his, I love his take that it's a process. I love that it's always a success. I think that any communication along the path of, of somebody finding some freedom in their life, even if it doesn't look successful, it's successful, right? Because it's continuing the conversation and you're laying down the footwork now or planting a seed or however you want to put it. Um, I also love that you guys kind of do that extra case management on the back end. I think that too many programs dump patients um, out, especially mm -hmm. residential. Like I work for a company that has over 200 programs um, and we work very hard. And part of my position is that case management after treatment um, to make sure like it, if you follow somebody in early recovery for a full year, their chance of relapse uh, plummets 90%. Mm -hmm. 90% wow. if you follow somebody for a full year with case management. Um, so I just, I like that you guys, that you guys do that. Um, and I think it's really important uh, that the families get the continued support because so many, so many times they, you know, they get the person into treatment and then they just wash their hands of it and they're done. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. And we also, I mean, part of all, this, is the last thing I'll say is like, you know, with our, our company, we, most of the time we're trying to get everybody to extend out for, like you said, six months to a year because the, the success rates are so much, so much higher when you do that, you know, but we th also thought, you know, ethically and, and responsibly, we at least need to include a month you know, so to be there, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of become a huge part of our business is just, um, you know, family case management and, mm. and it, it's become huge. And that yeah. is, that, that is where, you know, you get the, you get the success, like you said, but I like that 90%. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Love yeah. to hear it. Yeah. And that, that's a great statistic to, you know, throw out there. And when you're talking to the families, because if I would want everything possible for my loved one to stay sober, you know, whatever, yep. whatever that is to throw it at them. Um, John, the reading today was about um, child versus childlike. Yeah. Your childish versus childlike. Does that, and, and again, I, and we all could talk about all that, but I want to, I want to work it in with your interventions. What, what do you, do you see the childish 
person when and family when you walk in the room and do you see the child like that when when they're developing and growing is that something you see or is that just something that's way out that you know it, it just it's it's a little too far out before the healing begins well you know i think that there's <laughs> a lot of like childlike behavior especially out of the the person of concern because They've been they've been the big baby, the big kid, you know, the one that everybody's been looking after and caring for and covering up for. And, you know, so, yeah, I mean, it is that person is is very much, you know, again, non empowered. They think that they mm. you know, they're relying upon everybody. So, you know, when they start to to maybe get a little bit more um, under their feet underneath them a little bit, it seems like they do start to open up a little bit more to, to having fun and having, mm. you know, realizing that recovery can be fun. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say that, like, I, I've not really observed it deeply into that, but mm -hmm. like, I know that the people who are in a place where they're coming into recovery and they're starting to realize that it's not a death sentence, they start to mm. have more fun and they come open to fun. I went to a meeting on Sunday and the topic was fun and recovery. Mm. And, uh, you know, I got up there and I said, my first two months, I found myself at a hunt club <clears throat> out in the country at a picnic. And I'm like, this is what my life has become. But the people <laughs> around me were laughing and having a good time. And I found yeah. that I built community there. The yeah. next time it was about seven months sober. And I was at a retreat and they were doing an ice cream social. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, this is where I'm at. But you know what? It was fun piling all that that ice cream and all that syrup on there and yeah. with it all over their faces. I mean, it was fun. Yeah. And so yeah, I think that Absolutely. people do. I, I like to be see playfulness in their recovery. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is it? Rule number 62. Don't take yourself too seriously. That's right. That is it. That is exactly it. That's it. I seen Bambi, your face light up when um, John said recovery is not a death sentence. I seen you like smile from ear to ear. What's uh, what's your thoughts on that? And did you have any questions from John about that? Because we all think that going into recovery, yeah. right? Yeah. Everyone, you hear it from everyone, you know, when they're first going to come out, you know, of rehab or they're just going to their first meetings and it's always a topic, you know, but what am I going to do? How am I going to have fun? You know, I'm never going to be able to do this and I'm never going to be able to do that. You know, and you hear that and you, you know, you get to say to them, yes, but you get to do this and mm -hmm. you get to do this mm -hmm. and yeah. just see the, the change and the difference, you know, as they grow and they realize that, yeah, this is pretty okay, you know, and I can remember it the next day, you know, yeah. and <laughs> anyone and you know it's it's just amazing and i think it it hits all of us you know yeah. i hear it over and over and over yeah john yeah. what with, with that with that death sentence um when when you know you see it in their faces they don't smile like bambi does when when you say it's not a death sentence right <laughs> no. they don't believe no. that right <laughs> but i mean but i i tell them i go you know this is not let's not look at it as a death sentence let's look at it as an opportunity yeah. let's look at it as a reprieve because truth of the matter is where you're at right now you're pretty probably headed towards death you yeah know? yeah i remember a kid i'll say this real quick i remember a kid that i sponsored my very first sponsee i was nine months sober and um he was a drummer and he says i'll never be able to play drums again i'll never be able mm. you know he got married, had two kids, is sober today still, and dr has a band that he, I mean, soon after that, he was playing drums again, you know, mm -hmm. and it was like, and he was playing better. He came to me and goes, I'm playing better now than I ever have. Mm -hmm. So, Tommy from Motley Crue, right? Tommy, uh, is that uh, who we're talking about? That no. I'm not that close to him. But. <laughs> or Neil Pert. Was it Neil Pert? <laughs> Neil, uh, I don't know. Rush, Rush. That's right. Yeah, the part was rushed, but yeah, I didn't yeah. know he was in recovery. I didn't either. He died, so I we can't find out. So, anyways, <laughs> I'm just busting your chops here. Um, the you know, let's let's go into some quite I know I know we were gonna go talk about everything, but this is this is fascinating about you know interventions, and we're getting a little bit more deeper than the normal intervention conf, uh, con, you know, the you know, talk there or conversation. What um like what how, how do you how do you set up an intervention is it is it expensive is it 
you know, is it reachable for most people? Like, like, how do you, like, how do you even like know that you needed it? How, how does a loved one know that they needed an intervention, a family member? How, how do you know that? Generally, because they have been trying to get a loved one to go into a treatment setting for a period of time, or they've been several times over and over and over and it hasn't, they haven't gotten recovery. And so they feel that bringing a professional in, especially in the way that I frame it, that it's not like an event, it's, it's more of a process. They will, they will see the need for, you know, having a family unit reconstruction, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that way. And uh, you know, as far as, is it within reach of everybody? No, not necessarily. I mean, there's a fee behind it. I'm yeah. a trained professional, you know, um, it, and it's not an easy job. You know, mm -hmm. it's not easy at all. It's uh, you're talking about dealing with a lot of personalities. You're talking about trying to find um, inroads to connect with people, um, you know, showing up and talking to somebody who has no idea who you are and why are you here mm -hmm. and, and why you don't have a say in my life, you know, mm -hmm. so it is a difficult position, but you know, it is, it's within reach for people who, who've been the way I look at it, you've been pouring money and onto this thing over and mm -hmm. over and over and it hasn't worked. Why don't we try a different tact of investing, you mm -hmm. know, and if you'll allow me to, you know, make some recommendations. I have no, you know, no contractual agreements with any facilities mm -hmm. at all, but I can make some recommendations. And, you know, if you can take those recommendations and make a decision, now the ones I give you or one of your own, whatever, but just make that investment into, mm -hmm. into quality treatment, mm -hmm. make the investment into tr treating yourselves, you know, as a family, mm -hmm. and then it becomes more affordable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As a family, ladies, I'm going to throw, I'm going to open up the questions here to the 10,000, 20,000 foot view. Has any, has anybody here been part of an intervention? Has an intervention done on themselves on a loved one? Um, anything, you know, have you guys ever been involved in an intervention? I needed one. <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> I need one now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I've set a lot up, but I've never actually been a part of one. I mean, we've done 12 step calls in the past with families yeah. and I've done minimal work um in that area, but I've never actually kind of been a part of an official one before. Okay. Okay. Bambi, you have never been part of one? No. Okay. I, I had a, a, a one of my kids and and I I do like 12 step calls too. It's a, it's a it's a little different than what um what John does because he is trained professionally and there are you know different ways to handle things with different situations. Now John, let me ask you this. I, we only got a couple minutes left here but um you know an intervention you, we see it on TV, uh we 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 see it uh, it takes uh, from beginning to end an hour and then they jump on an airplane and, and they're in, in some treatment center and 15 minutes after that, they're all sober. They've been sober, you know, seven months already and life is good. Is that how it goes? It takes about an hour. You jump on a plane and life is good. Is that, is that how it goes? Not no. at all. Really? Not you mean TV's all. lying to us? God no. damn it. I knew it. You Shit. Know, the damn TV is lying. <laughs> I believe that. every woman doctor fills intervention. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, definitely not. And it, it's, you know, there's a lot of work that goes on the front end. I mean, that's where I spend most yeah. of my time is, yeah. uh, you know, I like to do, I have to do an intake call with just the key family members, a couple of them, maybe the husband, wife, mom and dad, whatever. Then I get together, okay, who's our team? And then I get that together. I reach out to all of them and find out if there should be a fit or not. And then we bring all those people together in a meeting on, on a Zoom or in person in my office. Then we have another meeting before we actually have the, the first meeting with them. And then we have the meeting itself, which usually a couple hours, you know. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got to transport somebody to mm -hmm. get them there. Then you've got, you know, I mean, it's it's a process for mm -hmm. sure. But, you know, I, I and the funny thing is, is Ken Seeley, one of those guys on that mm -hmm. show. That's mm -hmm. who I, I trained under him. I, yeah. I did his, one of his yeah. courses. So. Yeah, Ken's, but, Ken's been on this show. Ken's been here. So it was yeah. good. I mean, like yeah. it's called CCMI, Certified Case Manager Interventionist, five modules, lots of information. Mm -hmm. Very, very helpful for yeah. sure. Now, as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, is there, and, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll wind it down here, but you know, I, can, I have a thousand questions and ladies, I'll open the floor before we go to you guys. Is there like, when you sit down with the family after you do all this, it sounds like it could take a week or two or whatever, or whatever there, you know, whatever it is, when you sit down and, and talk to the family and, and the loved one who's, who needs the treatment, do you start a stopwatch? Is there a time that, you know, is it, is it paid for like three hours or an hour and you're done? Tell us a little about how, how an intervention can go. Well, an intervention will be, I mean, there, there's a flat rate for it. So no matter how much time I'm putting in, it's a flat rate. Okay. Um, you know, and what will happen is, is we sit down and we start to have a meeting and we start talking and some of them go quickly and some of them don't, but there's never any kind of stopwatch. There's nothing, okay. you know, I mean, I do, do I try and, and reel it in if it starts going like an hour and a half? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I really, is my job to like redirect if somebody starts cross talking to another person directly mm -hmm. in a ac accusatory way? Mm -hmm. Yes. I okay. mean, are the things that I do to like circumvent it going for too long? Absolutely. But I don't ever, you know, step in and go, you're done. We're done. Make a yes, decision. You know. but, I, <laughs> I, but I have, I mean, I, I looked at people and say, you're going to have to go today. I mean, mm -hmm. did you hear everything that's going on around mm -hmm. here? We really do need, you need to go yeah. today. Yeah. And that's a tough thing to say to somebody you don't know. Mm. You need treatment today after what everyone has said to you. Do you get it? Do you understand? That's, that's a difficult, that's a big ask. But, mm. you know, when you, when you've got a good, you know, a good reason and a good case and you got a lot of love, I mean, it's love, it's love, mm. it's love. It's all mm. about, it. you cannot do this any other way than walking and doing love. I mean, Jeff and Deborah J, good friends of mine, love first. That's their model. You know, mm. I mean, it's, it's about bringing a message of love and undying love, unwavering. Mm. It will yeah. always be there. But if yeah. we get on a healthy path, we can have, we all get on a healthy path, family, loved one, we can have more love than was ever imagined before. Mm. That's what, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, get in there and love the person until they say, yes, I love it. You know, it's, it's kind of, kind of what you're doing, you know, ladies, do you have any questions? Because I know there's, we could go on and on about this, but you know, I mean, I, I believe I have, I have a question after question after question, but, um, but do you ladies have any questions before we, we kind of close and find out how we can get a hold of John? No, ba I just Bambi? Know how our, um, how do our listeners or viewers get in touch with you if they need There you to. go. Okay. So we have a website and that is www.torchlightinterventions.com. Um, my, we have an info at torchlightinterventions.com email. So mm -hmm. INFO. Uh, also, I mean, there's a form on the website where you can get in touch with us. Uh, you can also reach me directly at 843-708-5748. Or you can reach Liz directly at 843-867-9064. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are those would be the best ways to reach out to us. Obviously, we're on Facebook at Torchlight Interventions on Facebook, on now it's called X on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's it's Twitter is now X. Really? On LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> and also on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram at Torchlight IV. And okay. Interventions. Yeah. Yeah. And all this information will be in the notes. So if you, if you uh, just scroll down and you'll see all that information, Bam will make sure it gets in there when Carl takes it all. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, interventions are definitely something that's needed. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've seen John work in the past. He helped me out with a couple of clients in the past and, um, you know, the families can't do it alone. And that's why we have, you know, somebody like John and Liz and all the other interventionists out there that do step up and do this grueling work because, you know, you, and I don't want to say you're a referee, but basically you have to step in there as a neutral party and understand that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not here to listen to you. I'm not here to listen to your family. I'm here to get you into treatment. What the right thing is to do. Is that correct? Is that kind of how it goes? Yeah. Basically. Somewhat. I mean, you want to, you want to make sure that they understand that it is their decision though. Yeah. I mean, like at the end of the day, you're a grown adult mm -hmm. and you will make your own decisions. And I yeah. get that. Yeah. But again, if you don't make the decision to accept 
what we're offering you today, then there's going to be some change in the interaction amongst your loved ones. Mm. You guys are interacting because they can't do this dance anymore. Yeah. Life is going to change one way or the other. John yeah. Fertemeyer, as I call him, and a good friend of mine, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, torchlightinterventions.com, correct? Torchlightinterventions.com. Yes, Please go to the website if you're looking for interventions. If you have any questions, see below uh, John's information that you can get a hold of him. Uh, one way or the other. And, um, you know, guys, it's just a, just a great service out there. And oh, one more question. Uh, you just do it in the, uh, the North Carol, the South Carolina area, or, or where do you do these interventions? Nationally. Um, okay. if, if needed internationally as well. Okay. okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Internationally also I mean Puerto Rico. Uh, we're actually going to go down and visit a facility that's in Costa Rica Mm -hmm. so we may be doing some work down there good. um so yeah wherever good, good. so anywhere anywhere you're listening to this john will john will help you john and liz will help you guys out so john thank you very airplanes. much yes that's it john's always on an airplane so john thank you for all the work that you do it is definitely needed um i see how hard you work um you know and and it's we really appreciate out here and especially the, us out here who are also helping couldn't do it without an interventionist a, a lot of the times, you know, and um, we really appreciate it. So guys, uh, ladies, um, I think that's it, right? Any, any other questions? Any, you want to add and end with anything? No, you guys are good. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much, you guys. Appreciate yep, John, it. thank you so much. And um, stay sober, everybody. This concludes this episode of Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast. Follow us on Facebook for past shows and updates and enjoy free access to twice daily support meetings. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week.